Awfully. Welcome to our cellars again. I think you can smell that this is a working place. So inside all of those, there is wine, it's aging, it will eventually end in someone's glass. Maybe yours, okay? So I'm going to ask you two things. Please, always walk with me. Don't be lost, we'll find you, okay? And if we find you after 6.30, you belong to us, okay? <laughs> you have been warned, Good day. okay? Okay, you'll be our slaves. So if you have to touch the casks and the vats, go ahead as long as you do it gently. Okay? With love. They've been making wine for you, so be kind. So Offley is one of the oldest companies. It was established in 1737 by an Englishman named William Offley. Quite logical today, right? So today it belongs to a Portuguese company called Sograto Vinhos. I think that that really doesn't ring a bell for you. <laughs> Normal. If I say Mateus Rosetto, is that something familiar? Yes. That green round bottle with some rosé wine inside. The Mateus was this company's first wine and first success in 1942. So since then, we've been making wines all over the world. I, in Port alone, we have three brands, Offley, Sandman and Fajaira. It's really one of the biggest Portuguese family-owned wine companies. I will after that present to you the gentleman you saw downstairs, the big gentleman with the red background. His name is Joseph James Forrester. We call him the Baron of Forreste. You have to say it in Portuguese, okay? So he wasn't a Baron and he also wasn't Portuguese. His uncle worked in the company. And so in 1830, he was 21 he decides to leave everything in England and come to Portugal, to Porto, to join the family business. And he was a genius. He's going to change everything for Port. We are very proud. And so we try to work like he did. We always try to marry 300 years making excellent Port with a touch of modernity and irreverence. And now, let's go for a walk. Come on. So, wine, so early. So, port, you all have ports at 
going to tell you why quartz is not really strong. To make quartz, we have to stop fermentation. So just after the process, we're going to press the grapes. And all that natural sugar will start turning into alcohol. What we do is add a very strong white alcohol. Some people call it brandy. It's not your regular drinking brandy. It's one spirit, 77% neutral alcohol. By adding this, it works like an antiseptic. It stops fermentation, keeps part of that natural sugar. That's why Porto is sweet and quite thick as well. Raisin, raisin, sorry, raises the alcohol percentage to about 20%. And that's what allows for wise to travel for very long distances. So if you go back to 1756, this is the only one that can travel to all over the world without a penny. And that's why it made what made port so popular so soon. So today, port is produced in Vigo, and we'll come here to the cellars in Villa Nova de Gaia in the early spring. Okay? So before it came by boats in the Barcos Javel, which you see on the river, today it comes by truck. I know it's less romantic, but it's the truth. So when the wine gets here, what we do is choose how to make it age. And that's why you have two different kinds of volumes. The casks, cascos in Portuguese, and the big ones there, the vats or the balseiros. Again, you don't have to learn the words. Okay. The reason why we have different sizes is so we can have different speeds and intensities of aging to make different kinds of port. Because port ages due to oxidation. We only have to make it rest so it can breathe through oak, oxidize in contact with air and change colors, flavors and aromas. So, let's change scenarios. Okay, so it's going to be comes in four different families, okay? So white, inside reds, rubies, and tonics, and then rosé. So first, white. I want to know, have you ever tried some white port? Yes. Okay, what did you try? Medium dry? Uh, dry. 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 Yeah. Sweet? No. Yeah. No one tried some sweet wine. <laughs> okay, go. Okay, try some white port and try as many, I didn't say as much, okay, as many as you can. Because white port is the only one that can be classified between extra dry, which is about 30 grams of sugar per litre, to extra sweet, which is about 140 grams of sugar per litre, which is like huge difference, okay, so try those. So we, for example, we have the medium dry, we often drink it with Schweppes and lemon, for example, and then we have a lacrima, and the lacrima is the Portuguese favorite. It's honey, 20% alcohol. Okay, you don't feel them, they're there. Okay? <laughs> so we also have a speciality, we call it the cachucha. The cachucha is around 7 to 8 years, which is double the time a regular white spends inside the big ones. Okay, so white wine, as it grows older, it gets darker and thicker. The cachucha is almost orangey in colour and you can actually feel oak and alcohol behind it. So it's very special, it's white but you know, powerful. So that's a wine that we only sell here, otherwise in Quebec. Okay, not easy to find. If you want to try something different, shivu. Yes. Oh, lucky people, huh? There you go. <laughs> and I know you can find it because I have a colleague and she lived with me in France. And then she came here and then she went to Quebec and every time she buys a bottle she sent me a picture. <laughs> <laughs> She's very happy with it. Do you okay. receive many pictures? Yes. <laughs> many, many. Yes, many, many. For us, many friends as she has, she buys a bottle of Kishusha. So really give it a try because it's really quite different and very, very good. So then, red ones, rubies, tonics. So the difference here is character. You know that character, like for people, has nothing to do with age, okay? That's why you have teenagers that think like old people and old people that behave like children, okay? One is the same. Rubies are always young because they go inside the big ones or inside the bottle. So it's always protected from oxygen. And so you keep those beautiful dark red colors, typical of red wines, and very fruity, intense flavors and aromas. Whilst tonics, there you go, 
they go inside these smaller ones. So because you always have less wine, but much more wood around it, the wine is much more exposed to oxygen. So it ages faster. After three years alone, it's an old wine in character. After 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years inside those, you get beautiful golden amber colors, transparent and thinner textures, and in flavors and aromas, you've lost the pretty flavors. But keep flavors and aromas that remind you of oak, caramel, coffee, dry fruits, and spices. So I know it seems impossible. There's just one way to understand everything, you know, theory, practice, taste, taste it, is it? Practice room. I know there's always homework, but that's up to you. Okay, I have enough homework, I will want to help you with your homework, okay? So that's one last kind of wine, which is rosé. Have you ever tried some rosé pot? Yes. What do you think? It was rosé, right? It's rosé. <laughs> so it's pink, it's very transparent, it's very fruity. It's still quite new as well. We've been putting the rosé since 2010, and we were one of the first houses to do it. It's still port wine, okay? So it's still 20% alcohol. Drink it cold, and don't be afraid of cocktails. Ice cubes, pepper beef leaves, watermelon, mango, shrubs, savannah, up to you, okay? Have fun, it's very important. So do you have some questions so far? Then I will make you walk. Come on, let's go. To check your bottles to see if you're buying port from Portugal. <laughs> Might happen. So I'm going to tell you now about categories, and that's the reason why you don't find dates on your labels. Okay? So port is most of the times a blend. Different years, different wines put together. That allows for us to always keep quality and price year after year. Also works like a secret recipe. Each house has a different blend. And so that's also why port adapts so well to different markets. Always through for classical wines, three to four years, reserve five to eight. And when you see those 10, 20, 30, and 40, still blends within, of course, a certain age limit. But all of these non dated wines age in oak. So when they go inside the bottle, that's it, it's dead. Okay, so there is no reason for you to keep a 20 year old tonic. For 20 years in the garage, it's really not going to make 40. Okay, it's probably going to make very, very good vinegar. You're not producers, right? So buy port, drink port. It's very expensive vinegar. Very good, but very expensive. So <laughs> it's also it's really very good. Try it. So it's a wine to drink. Let's say don't keep it more than two to three years inside the bottle. Okay, just drink it when you get home. Opened a white wine will last around two to three months. Red wine, five, six, even more if it's a very old ton, for example. When you see the date on your label, you have a wine from one very good year. Full stop. When you see the date and the word vintage underneath, then you've got something special. Vintages are not only very good years, it's also the best red wine, red grape. Sorry, from that year. So it's always a ruby, okay? Thing is, it's actually going to be very aggressive in the beginning. So you have to make it pressed. Two years inside one of those, and then it's up to you to keep the bottle for at least 10 to 12 years minimum time, okay? So we recommend for you to keep it somewhere in between 25 to 50 years. But you can also keep it longer, okay? So the older sports are still good. And those are the 1815, 200 years, we call them Waterloo's, still drinkable, okay? We keep them laying down, one touching the cork. When you want to drink a vintage, 1815, 1990, your year of birth, put it up, wait for the deposit to settle, okay? 24 hours, in between, pick up your phone, call a few friends, call a few family members, Call, you know, don't call too many friends, okay, because if you might not have too many bottles. So it's a one really that you should drink within 24 hours, because it's like a time bottle. 
as you pop it, the one will oxidize very quickly. And so this is the one which is kept for some vibrations. People normally already know when they're going to drink the vintage, when they bought it. People buy those, for example, for the 50th birthday, with the year the person was born on the label. Parents also buy those, for example, when a kid goes to school, and then you'll drink it for the end of the studies, or first job, or first house, or wedding, or something, okay? So that's what you need to know to drink port. And so now, I'm going to take you to see that map over there, okay? And soon, soon, we'll practice what we learn. <laughs> Let's go. There is a reason why he is the inspiration for the house, okay? So this gentleman was a wine producer for several royal European houses, wine merchant, painter, photographer, artist, scientist, enologist, cartographer, then six children, if I remember. He was the very first to draw scientific maps of the Doro, and that's why he's going to be given the title of Baron. That's a thank you from the King of Portugal at the time. So the map here shows you all the Doro, right from Porto, that you might not recognize. Can you miss the reach there? There you go. And you have the old suspended bridge with those pilots, which are the grass on the other side. Okay. Then also see the very first sellers up there. So from Porto up to the border with Spain. So all of those are gone. All of that has been dynamited. Those are the dams in the Boro River. Those represent the most difficult spots in the Boro. In the time of the Baron, the volume starts there, like today, at Gregua, but actually ended at there instead of the border. Okay? All of that was only built in the 20th century because the river was very difficult. If you go to the waterfront, you see marks on the houses with dates, those are flood marks. And some of those are quite impressive. But the Baron, he doesn't care. Okay? He's a man from the Romantic period. He loves adventure and danger. And so one day, he invites all of his friends for his birthday and he goes, to the Cachon de Valera. So that's just the most difficult spot in the Douro because there was a big boulder that blocked the river. And so the Douro had to go through a few meters. And so it caused a lot of rapids and waterfalls. So of course, as soon as he gets to the Cachon de Valera, the boat capsizes. We have the press from the time that tells us it's a miracle because most people survive without injuries. We have several eyewitnesses that tells us that women survived because of the greenery, okay, which is float down the river. Apparently it's true. The Baron himself, what did he do? Poof. Vanish. And I found the body. He was an excellent swimmer. He knew very well the river. He was very athletic and he was 52. So people will tell the most fantastical tales about Mr. Forrester. I just want to remind you that port leaves a long time inside the bottle. So what we say in Portugal? First of all, port yields about anything. Okay, you cough, you drink port. That's what people tell you. Also, drink a glass of port a day. It not only keeps the doctor away, it also keeps the mortician away, okay? <laughs> You'll probably live forever. Never found his body, right? Let's follow him the voice. Let's go for a glass of port. Remind you, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Come on, <laughs> let's go. Let's try some points. I am going to do a very short presentation of the ones you're going to taste. And I really would love for you to drink while I speak. Okay, I think it's much more educational if you drink at the same time. So, I'm going to start by turning this off. <laughs> and I'm going to start with the white one. So the white one you're going to try is a white medium dry. Okay, so it's right in the middle. So you'll see it's very balanced. So that's going to drink either as a tiny coat, otherwise as a cocktail. Go for schwarz and lemon, that's the classic one. But you know, go for green. I love green apples because it brings acidity, for example. Otherwise passion fruit. Otherwise peach, pineapple, it's really up to you. Then you keep it in the fridge, three to four months, no problem. The very first red one, the one with that reddish, transparent color, it's a classical tonic, okay? So it's a red one, but it's spent three years inside 
besides those smaller ones. And so really, you can see it really lost a lot of color and lost a lot of body, right? It's reddish, transparent. So that's a wine to drink either slightly chilled with some salted cheese, for example. Otherwise, go for caloric and very sweet desserts. Everything with caramel and lots of sugar work. Portuguese pastry in general works. If you're making caramel at home, inside the caramel also works very well. And then finally, You can see it has a dark, deep color. So it's around five years. You'll find some tanning. It's going to stick to your cheeks. Okay, so this one is very intense. So go for some very strong cheese, for example. Charcuterie, so smoked, smoked meat, sorry, also work. Otherwise, dark chocolate, black and red fruit desserts. Inside desserts as well. Okay? So this is it for you. Please enjoy your wines. If you need anything at all, come see us by the shop. Okay? Thank you very much. Enjoy your wines.